Either way. How's it going? <laughs> it's Monday. Van's in the shop. Um, and fortunately, the shop is like a block from my shop. And uh, so I thought, you know, it's hot. Uh, I'm going to the shop and uh, make a video. Um, it's sort of a continuation of the last post. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk. There's going to be more do in this one. Um, so anyway, without further ado, <laughs> I said do twice. Um, let's get going. My new pencil. That is my new pencil. Okay. So. I really don't want to get my planer out. So. And it doesn't have to be smooth because we're going to be using the draw knife today. The sharp draw knife. I should do a giveaway for whoever counts it the many times as I said I've been sharpening my draw knife for years and years I had a good chuckle about that uh, let's see so I have a piece of white oak because white oak is easier I've got my grain orientation going straight up and down I have a little piece of sapwood here and uh, so if I've got sapwood, this is heartwood that's close to the sapwood. So we're gonna go with it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna strike a little line, a little line ski. I'm gonna get my, get my measuring device out. Cross. It is about the last hatchet handle, the hatchet handle that wasn't in the frame uh, in the last video. So we're going to measure out an inch and a quarter, and we're going to maybe, oops, that's the wrong side, that's got to be the flat side. So we mark an inch and a quarter, and this is really just for demonstration purposes. Now let's see, am I taking this? No, I'm taking it off the other side. I'm going to take it off the side of the tree that is closest to the sapwood. That would probably be a good idea. So, straight enough. <clears throat> Let me see. I've been having camera trouble lately. This is going to catch me in the workpiece. I did a whole video the other day. Yes, that'll get it. I did a whole video the other day instead of checking. It had me perfectly and it cut the workpiece off, so I had to trash the video. So I'm just trying to avoid that. So, anywho. Not bad for a Monday. So that's how much I don't have to trim off now. Hey, not bad at all. So we take our sharpening here very seriously. And by the way, if anybody has any tips that they want to share, you can never learn too much about sharpening. This is Jewelers Rouge and it helps when you strike. This is just a piece of leather glued 
to a fancy paddle. Reminds me of getting spanked as a kid. Diapers. Um, so we're just going to straw. Deep into a piece of white oak that didn't get on video. Was roughing up this wax handle, and that's why I cut that off because this is a piece of eight quarter, and it, the video was 28 minutes, which actually isn't bad to get to this rough bit. Um, I'm going to swale that in more like that, and there's the palm swell, but uh, 28 minutes to get to something that feels decent you can hold in your hand. Not bad. So this, uh, I'm just going to put it 36 grit on the sander and make something cool out of it. This is going to be our test piece. Um, we're going to make like a little scaled down version of a hatchet handle, maybe a little carver finish. But that's, you can tell it's Monday. And stropping is a very important part of the sharpening process. It uh, takes that little burr that you create and knocks it off. And I'm still not cutting the arm here. I'm still not cutting my arm. There, there we go. Almost said it wrong. <laughs> I had to think. Um, but, yeah. There's plenty of videos where guys are cutting their arm here. I already have enough hair that's left my body. And I brought that back fine. Uh, that's what I like about those two little stones, the 800 that I got from Walmart and 15 bucks um, that I knocked down this back edge of the bevel just a touch and, and, and then actually started the edge with that. But they're small enough and light enough that you can feel what you're doing on that edge. Um, this would have been a mistake. I would not have been happy. So, we got our piece of material here. And um, the grain is even better now that I cut more of the grow rings off. It's a little bit rift sawn, but it's more to the quarter sawn side of life. So, I'm liking that. A little run out, but you know, it is a demonstration. Um, so, I think I left my pencil over here. And this is not building furniture. To me, it's very fun because it's not building furniture. Um, and I like to build furniture. Um, but there's just something about this tool that <laughs> there's just something about it. It's pretty awesome. Did I mention that it needs to be as sharp as sharp can be? Um, if it's dull, uh, you're only going to get so far with it. Oh, there's the mail man. Here it comes. I got a little card, it's on the floor. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so we got our little blank, left over from something I can't remember. Um, so, we're just gonna, let's see, I guess we'll take the, the side that has been through the saw. That's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the draw knife. Um, there's just something about it that is 
really satisfying to me. So, the next thing, so you got your sharp draw knife, you've got to have a vise, and you've got to have a heavy bench. And even if it's a small work bench, uh, put concrete blocks under it. Um, I've got my 200 pound anvil underneath mine um, because um, you know, we're not going to use a rasp. We're going to rough this. You know, this is the axe that wasn't in the frame in the last video, but this was 30 minutes worth of axing and just a little bit of a uh, tiny bit of shaping with some 36 grit sandpaper. When I said I'm not sure about it, I'm not too sure about that. I don't know if I want a gooseneck this close to the edge. I think that's going to get bunged up. But this is probably going to end up going to my niece anyway, and I don't know how much she'll use it. It's just more of a keepsake than anything else. But this was roughed out in about 30 minutes. So the draw knife is the force. It is. <coughs> I just got it. <coughs> threw up full of sawdust on that. <coughs> Thanks, Dar. Uh, but it is a wickedly powerful tool if you stay with it and you just work with it and it helps you learn about wood, it helps you learn about your hand-to-eye coordination, it helps you to anticipate um, when a mistake, anticipate before a mistake happens. Um, because believe me, when you start using it, chunks of wood that you don't want to come off that wood are going to go flying. And uh, when you're working on an axe handle, you know, even if you're just shaping something that you got at a hardware store or whatever, um, you know, that costs money. What, did you spend 20 bucks or you spent 40 bucks or uh, whatever you spent? Um, you can take off a lot of material with this. Uh, you can also take off just translucent little tiny shavings with it. Um, but the whole key is to do that when you want to do that. So it is my hope that my humble little video will assist you with your ventures into the draw knife, if you show there. Um, I don't really like this vise for, for draw knife because it limits access with the draw knife because it's flush with the bench. I actually prefer a, uh, a vise on top of the, uh, like a, what I really want to get is like a giant Wilton machinist device that mounts on the uh, corner of the bench and you can turn it and you're, you've got it right at the right height to where you can put your body into it because the whole point of a draw knife is when you're hogging, you really don't use your arms uh, as much as you use your body. And you need a vise that you can tighten the bejeebus out of it, the material. Uh, so. Uh, so, we're gonna go bevel up.
the lines are up out of the lines. Um, but I still think it would be okay for uh, demonstration purposes. Definitely don't want your work piece moving. It is a party foul. see how close to the line we are, are already. I mean, what was that? A couple of minutes? Uh, but I mean, let me put this piece of white oak in here and uh, we'll see what we see. I mean, so I got my bevel up again. seconds so and this is this is baby butt smooth I mean with the exception of the obvious gouge marks you know from from the curls that I was lifting so let's turn it around I'm gonna put the bevel down put the bevel down and we'll now see how these curls are coming up at me um, not as much material being removed, but still, not too bad. So if I was making a hammer handle, I would just be working the corners. set of gill set that is automatic that I don't have to think about and this guy messed me up I mean and it wasn't until I got serious about that edge that I went past being able to you know get axe heads to fit and um, you know changing the ergonomics of handles and stuff I mean, when you get this sharp enough, you can sculpt with this thing. And this was developed now. It's just dead. And it's a real controlled cut. Now, when you turn it up, if you want to get it open, I generally do. If I want to pair, I run this in a circular motion, but when you have the bevel up, it is vital that you're going with the grain. You're not going to get good results. But see, I almost have this. I mean, I just have, I'm using my thumbs with just a tiny little bit of pressure. And it's pairing it. 
And then if we get crazy, like see that I'm starting to tear the wood there. If you're tearing the wood, stop. Unless you're hogging and you've got, you know, unless you're hogging and you're doing this, or you're coming in and you're going. Adjustments. It's almost like caulking. Uh, when you're caulking, as you come, you know, you've got your bead going, but the closer you get to yourself, you've got to start changing the angle and make the adjustment so that the caulk bead comes out decent. Um, I will never be a caulker. I have to use tape, I admit it. But we have uh, a surface here that. Um, with a little more help, we take out the gouge mark here. And again, I'm going back to that kind of got sidetracked. But, uh, you know, you constantly have to adjust your angles. You know, as I come up the piece, the angle has to change. The thing is, Really, in the beginning, keep that thing back. The more you try to be aggressive with it without experience, you're going to start taking away that you don't want to take. Look at it, and she'd be like, just get in the house, let's watch TV. But I mean, and see how I'm going, I'm holding this at, at, at an angle, which coming straight on at it like this, um, it's just not as effective. Um, even when you're hogging, which I was actually doing that, and that's why I had a few problems, but if you're coming across like that, and I'm using, when I'm doing that, I'm actually, once I get to the point, I plant my arms, and I pull back with my body, and we still have a baby butt smooth, something that is going to require minimal sanding. Um, so that's a test piece and hmm, not too bad not too bad for nothing <laughs> i mean it's just like but i mean that's total totally uh you know that doesn't even need an electric sander you can if you're close to your shape that you want you know, you're looking at probably 100 grit, 220, and done. Um, you don't need one of these. Um, if you have a draw knife, a good eye, and an ability to learn techniques, you know, um, you can have a lot of fun. I hope I'm still in the frame. I don't know. I have, I have, I have camera issues. Hey, thanks for help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, if you can help me. Hey, sorry. Oh, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What the... What the flock is? There we go. Upside down camera. Help me, Pixel! I'm just kidding. 
It's going to be this way forever. <laughs> I even did a video once and I like uh, I did like a 20 minute video and I didn't swipe over the video. I took a picture. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse the sawdust. Anyway, my phone died, then the morning went crazy, then I had to go pick up my van, and of course it rained. And so, yeah, um, I decided to start working on my uh, friend's retirement axe. And then that one that was in the vise, in the bunker, I cut that off and started shaping that on the sander. Um, just getting used to that sander. And man, is that sander awesome. Um, but uh, anyway, um, that is that. Um, I did want to take this guy and uh, show you some more draw knife stuff. I'd like to get another half inch, quarter inch, but I mean, I'm right there. And see, this is another thing. This is why I want to get making my own handles too. This curve is just, oh, it's too long. I mean, I'm wanting to sit it right here, but oh, gone. that's more than a third. Let me cut my own curve. Come on, Whiskey River. Anyway, you can see I'm almost touching everywhere I need to touch. So I don't think I'm gonna be doing too much more with this. But what I wanted to show you is more draw knife stuff. Uh, we're gonna do it just a little more. And then we'll get back to our, our other handle that we're trying to rough out. Um, Got beveled down, and I am. I'm not scraping. I am actually using, utilizing this like a chisel. These are just minuscule pieces, and this axe has been right on the money with with the the fit and everything. I mean, I've basically been able to use the rust on the inside of this puppy uh, as a guide where my high spots are. I got a little bit of high spot there. Also, they cut this like curve that was so thin. I mean, like, every time I sit it down, you see I'm going across the grain a little bit. And this is just, there's hardly any pressure on this. I am letting the tool, letting the tool do the work. And I don't even have a curl, I just have a little indentation. This fit is outstanding. But I mean, you know, I am just barely, barely working on it. So I mean, the, the the difference between hogging out, you know, starting to rough out your handle and taking gigantic pieces of wood and then taking little tiny, teensky, tinsky, toonsky, little smally, roonsky pieces. It's an amazing tool. But it's got to be short. I mean, like, wicked short. I mean, like, Double wicked, maybe even triple wicked sharp. So I'm feeling not even have curl right here. See where that rust stops? I just have an indentation. So we're going to follow the rust. We're going to come back. See the little curls I'm taking? I am not scraping. I am using the pairing action. Using the sharpness of the draw knife. 
If I was scraping, it would be more like that. We're not going to scrape. Scraping that. Hey, never works for you. You guys know how I feel about sharpening. So I'm just taking that dent in the wood. Taking a little bit of rust here. Now if this wasn't sharp, this would be pulling wood like mad. It'd be all over the place. And the thing I like about the draw knife, as opposed to a spoke shave, which I've used spoke shaves too before. You know, you try different things. Of course you try different things. But the thing that I like about the draw knife the most is the fact that you can see, you can see a draw knife uh, you kind of can't see. You know, you've got the sole of the draw knife. I mean, here you can see the cutting action, you know, where you're uh, actually um, blade is hitting the wood. And I found that I like that better. So I'm at a point with this where how crazy do I want to get? Do I want to bring it down another half inch? Um, I don't know, I'll marinate them. But I mean, we're, to quote somebody, we are there. And it's hard. This axe was also hung upside down. That's why it was kind of like a parallelogram. Um, I think what had happened when he knocked, when he had it the other way, and they knocked, not this one, but that one point, they knocked this, this corner off and tried to fix it when I got it, and it, it, looked, it looked like crap. Um, but uh, it's, That's sharp. Um, yeah. And I ran this through the bandsaw. I ran the curve of this through the bandsaw to open this puppy up. And that was a good thing. But, I mean, we're there. The pencil line, I'm about 3 eighths of an inch from the pencil line that I was wanting. I would really like to be down a half of an inch more, but I mean, the fit. Can you see the fit? I mean, 1941. It's good steel, good American steel. It's gonna have to have a big old wedge. So, anyway, that was, oh, I did cut myself. Look at that. Oh, I'm wounded. Uh, so, anywho, how, uh, I might bring it down some, I don't know. We've got some teak over there though, I'm gonna make a teak wedge, I've decided. Walnut, not so much, it splits too much, so we'll try teak.
teeth. I have made a large mouth bass. No, but seriously. You get what I'm saying. Um, it's fun. Uh, it's great. Uh, but now this is, you know, I mean, I was just free forming it, no pattern, no real uh, anything going on. No idea what I would want to do with this yet. Um, I could take it over to the bandsaw and cut something out on it. Um, you know, do a traditional blah, blah, blah. But this is a powerful tool. So, if you sat through all of this, <laughs> thank you very much. We have 18 subscribers. We're headed for 20. <laughs> have a good evening. Um, I doubt I'll get this up tonight, but um, there's going to be a boatload of editing. Um, but whatever part of the week this comes up, Make it yours, and then make somebody smile. Um, everybody's channels are awesome. Keep putting out content, everybody. Um, if you're thinking about getting a channel together, get a channel together. It's just super fun, and uh, everybody shares, and um, you don't know where we're going to end up. But it's going to be fun. Uh, it's better than watching the news, let me tell you. Um, this actually looks more like an axe type of thing. I put an axe. I'll put a, I tell you what, I'll put a four pounder on this. Don't test me, I will do it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So, get yourself a draw knife if you dare. But uh, yeah, that's all for now. Um, more coming on the sharpening. Um, it's really hard to think up stuff on, on stuff that uh, is like boring as paint drying on the wall. Um, but hey, um, that's why I'm here. Talk to you later, see ya. Hey, you guys. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, before I go, um, I am such a stickler. I could not leave this piece undone. <laughs> so I did a little off camera work, probably about 10 minutes. Um, I used the die grinder a little bit for more shaping and then hit it with some 100 grit and did a little doodad on the bandsaw and uh, came up with something that it's odd looking. But I tell you what, you know what? I may just very well put like a two and a half pound head on this, maybe a three, just depending. Um, actually, I did get the grain right. Um, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to, I think the video makes more sense with some sort of finished product rather than, oh, yep, yeah, yeah, it's roughed in, um, uh, yeah, it's good, see you later, bye. Um, but I tell you, right in here, uh, with the die grinder and the little drum sander and some rotation, um, cause you're not going to be able to do every single little curve with the draw knife. You're going to have to, you're going to have to bring in some stuff and, and whether it's a hand tool, a file, a wrap, sandpaper, what have you, you're going to have to get after it for your final shape. But, uh, it's, it's a little humpy right here. Not too bad. Um, I just need to make this the same as this, which is not very much difference. It's just a little bit fatter there, but the thing about it is, if 
from my pinky to my index finger and where this is happening, this feels great. This feels great. This feels ergonomic. This feels like a tool that I want to use. Um, so stay tuned. I think we are going to actually hang ahead on this. Not sure exactly which one. Uh, I know it's definitely not going to be the one pound Norland. Um, but uh, yeah, just a little finished product for you. Um, might work on it just a little bit more, like I said, right in there, but hey, not bad for flying by the seat of my pants. And let's just call it 95% draw knife. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.